Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how to use the even heat kiln uh, for ceramics specifically. So I'm going to show you how to program um, a slow cone 05 bisque. Now with ceramics, there's total, so many different cones um, and different firings that you can do. I know here at Make Haven, uh, we're going to be doing more gear towards low firings. So we have the kiln right here. What you're going to do is you're going to open it up. Um, and now at this point, when you are loading a kiln, you would already have your pieces made, ready to go, um, and completely bone dry. So bone dry means that it's no longer cold to the touch. Um, it'll still probably have that gray color depending on what type of clay you're using. Um, but if it's still cold to the touch, it's still probably too wet to go into the kiln, uh, which we don't want because we don't want explosions later. So when you're loading the kiln, you always want to make sure that you have a shelf in here um, with at least one layer of kiln wash. Uh, not super important for the, for the bisque, but more so for the glaze because uh, if you're doing a glaze firing, that glaze is going to melt and you'd rather it melt onto the kiln wash rather than the shelf itself. Um, when you're loading the kiln, I know this one's a little bit smaller, but fit what you can in here. And with a bisque firing, you don't have to worry about pieces touching because there's no uh, glaze or um, that's going to bondage together or anything like that. But when you are loading, we do have the thermal couple right here, which does read temperature, and that is important to the kiln. So you do want to be cautious of that when loading up your pieces into here. So even though this is an electric kiln, um, so it does all the work for you, you want to put that cone pack in there just to make sure, just in case something's going on and the kiln monitor says it reached a certain point, but if you have that cone pack in there and it's not melted down to the temp that you need it to, you know something internally is going on that needs to be figured out um, and that something's not matching up. So once you have your kiln all loaded, we're going to close it up with your cone pack in there, ready to go. And then so here, um, you can, uh, program your own firing that you want depending you know if you're doing an 04 05 um, each cone is going to have a different firing setting i know there is a ceramic um, portion of the manual at the, one of our bottom drawers um, and also a lot of information you get online um, if you need specific segments and temperatures and, and ramps to kind of hold on to all right so over here i already started a new program uh, for this specific firing obviously there's nothing in here so we won't be doing it uh, today um, so I've already got it started with step one, um, and it is important for bisques, is that the ramp rate is 80, so that's gonna go 80 degrees an hour until it hits 180. And now 180 is below boiling point, which is what we wanna keep it at. Because as you know, I was talking about how um, the, the clay is cold. So even if your clay is completely bone dry, there's still tiny little water molecules that are gonna be in there. And if you set the kiln to ramp up too fast and there's still those water molecules, once it heats, uh, reaches the boiling point, it's gonna do what water does best and it's gonna boil and that's how you get explosions. It's gonna expand within the clay um, and we don't want any exploding pieces in our kiln at all. So, so if you're going to add a firing to this kiln, which is nice because you can save um, a specific firing that you want. And so once you programmed it, it's already saved in there. So later on, you can just click like, so this is um, anneal, which I think is for metal work. Um, so if you're doing metal work, you can click on that, but it's a nice, easy way to always have it uh, programmed in, but we don't have that yet. So we're gonna hit new schedule over here. That was asking me for the title. Um, so right now I'm going to put a 05. fast all right oh five fast bisque you want to make sure it's fast in there because if somebody has a bigger piece they won't get confused and they'll know that they'll need a slower one but this is just the firing that we're doing so we're going to add a step and so this is segment one and we're going to go 80 degrees an hour and it's going to go up to 180 and now we're going to hold that for four hours and we're gonna say no to this and no to this. It's gonna to go to 180 and it's gonna hold for four hours. Now for a bisque, you want at least four up to 10 to 12 hours, depending on what kind of piece you have in there. Like if I'm firing a bunch of tiny little cups, um, four hours is fine. If you're gonna put a sculpture in here, I'd recommend longer because that's a lot more uh, clay that has to be dried out. So from here, we got the hold. Um, and I'm going to now add a new step. Add step. Now from here, I'm gonna actually keep it going 80 degrees because we're still, it's still slow. So we're doing 80 degrees an hour still. 
and that's going to go up to 250 for a slow one yeah we'll keep that there kind of just keep it you know you want you want some holds um nope nope all right now we're gonna go to add step i had already pre-written this down so i'm just copying and pasting information you can find a bunch of different um kiln charts and firing charts online and on different ceramic websites uh, depending on what you need for your thing all right so we're, we're gonna create a couple more steps so now we're gonna go to 250 an hour that's going to get up to 1,000 degrees. That's 1,000. Yep. Zero. Nope. No. Nope. Perfect. Okay. And then for four, we're going to go 150 degrees an hour. And then that's going to get up to 1,300 degrees. Yep. That's 1,300. Zero. And if there's no hold time, make sure you put a zero, otherwise it's not gonna save. Now we're gonna go to step four. We're going to 180 degrees an hour now, to 1685 temp, zero hold. And then last step, going back down to 80 degrees an hour, and you know what? We'll hold this for like an hour once it reaches full temp. And now that that's it. So you load your kiln ready to go. Um, because this is a communal space, we do want to make sure that other people know what's going on. Um, so we do have this kiln use little chart right here. So you're going to put this, the time that you started the firing, the time it ended, and your name if you are firing the kiln. And then we have this neat little button right here that we're gonna just pop on right here that lets people know that the kiln is on. Do not touch, do not open, it is hot. And then after that, once your, your firing is done, um, with anything, this kiln is getting up to at least, I mean, this firing over 1800 degrees. It's gonna be super hot. Um, with bisque, you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, but I say regardless, I don't open the kiln door if it's over 100. Um, you know, we do have some gloves over here that you can use to pick up pieces if it's still hot. Um, but with glazes as well, because glaze is, um, it does turn into glass, uh, essentially, that uh, you will definitely want it to give it time to cool. It's not exactly like glass work where it's super de 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 detrimental. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if you take a piece of glaze out too, too fast and it's still too hot, that's when you're going to get a lot of cracking and you're going to hear it like ping and stuff like that which you don't want because you want to be able to use uh, the whatever beautiful piece of ceramic that you have just made um so i say rule of thumb regardless if it's over 100 uh just let it chill out let it let it cool down and once it passes it goes below 100 degrees open it up and you're going to carefully like it just like loading it you're going to want to unload it watching out for those thermal couples and everything like that um, and you know, God forbid anything happens with, uh, you know, if a piece does break, if something goes wrong with the firing, as I said before, this is a communal space. So we do want to make sure that whatever bits or messes, uh, happens in this kiln, that it is our responsibility as the fire to clean it out and make sure it's, uh, nice and clean and spec and span, uh, for the next person to use it. Um, and there you go. And that is a quick crash course. Um, on the even heat kiln for ceramic use specifically. And um, just like anything, you can find, you know, if you want to use a specific glaze or a specific clay, um, there are so many websites online to teach you uh, what, what firings to go with what and what schedules will work best for what you want to make. So thank you. Uh, that was the crash course. <laughs>